Welcome back to Disera Media Literacy, the radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. In today's episode, we will focus on digital literacy and online safety. So how does the internet work? The internet is a global network of computers that allows people to share information and communicate with each other. It is a powerful tool that has changed the way we live and work. However, it is important to understand how the internet works and the potential risks associated with it. So what are the techniques used to spread disinformation? Disinformation is often spread through social media, where it can be amplified by bots and other automated accounts. It can also be spread through email, text message, forums, chat rooms, photos, videos and other forms of online communication. Computer programmes known as AI or artificial intelligence with the ability to replace original videos, audio or photos known as deep fakes are becoming a cause for concern in the spread of disinformation and malinformation. You only have to check out the Instagram deep fake profiles of Tom Cruise and Keanu Reeves to see how convincing these are. These programmes can replicate actual people doing and saying things that they haven't actually done or said. If you are witnessing a politician doing and saying something on a video, it is difficult to doubt its authenticity. This is where good old intuition and knowledge of a character becomes extremely important. We need to ask ourselves, is this something that aligns with what I know of this person? Shallow fakes are equally as disturbing, but created by someone with basic video editing tools. An existing piece of media content can be completely altered and manipulated to present a different story or message. The goal of both deep fakes and shallow fakes are to twist reality and distort the facts. Internet bots are software applications that have been designed and programmed to complete repetitive tasks automatically and more quickly than humans and work 24-7. There are different types of bots. For example, Alexa and Siri are chat bots that can simulate conversations. Social media platforms have social bots that influence online discussions. If you're shopping online, shop bots will help you find the best price for the product you're looking for. Spiders, also known as crawlers, find content for search engines like Google or Firefox. These are all known as good bots and can be used to replace humans in areas like customer service, business and entertainment. In fact, chatbots are now being utilised in the care of older adults to fight social isolation and assist in daily activities. Bad bots are malicious bots used in cyber crimes and include spam bots, which drive users to websites through pop-up promotions and hackers that can attack websites and gather personal and sensitive information. So how do you identify malicious bots? There are a number of ways to know if your system has been infected. The internet connection might run slower than usual. The computer might crash without any cause. It might take longer than usual to shut down your computer or to reboot your computer. You might find add-ons in your browser that you didn't install. Pop-up windows might appear even when you're not using the internet. You might get warnings popping up to tell you to click on a link or your computer will be infected. Your friends might get emails or messages from you that you didn't send. 
So what are some tips for creating strong passwords and protecting your online privacy? Protecting your online privacy is important, especially as more and more of our personal information is shared online. We'll be looking in more detail in our next episode on how to protect yourself online. But here are some tips for creating strong passwords and protecting your online privacy. Use a mix of letters, numbers and special characters in your passwords. Avoid using easily guessable information such as your name or birth date. Be wary of public Wi-Fi networks. Use privacy settings on social media accounts. And how do we spot and avoid online scams and frauds? Online scams and fraud can take many forms from phishing emails to fake websites. Here are some tips for spotting and avoiding online scams and frauds. Be skeptical of unsolicited emails and text messages. Be wary of offers that seem too good to be true. Do not provide personal information unless you are certain of the legitimacy of the request. Check for spelling and grammar errors on websites or emails. Use two-factor authentication when available. Be sure to tune in for the sixth episode of Disarray Media Literacy. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate. So today we did a deep dive into um, bots, deep fake, shallow fake, which I found, find extremely scary. I think we're going into territory where it's going to be so impossible for people to distinguish what's true, what isn't mm. true. I mean, we all believe when we see somebody doing something that, you know, that is, you know, we can see them doing it. They are doing it. But with deep fakes, you know, this can be completely manipulated. Yeah. Um, how do these create difficulties um, for social media users? Oh, well, it's, it's you literally can't believe your own eyes. You know that that's literally, you know, um, uh, on the on the iPhone now, um, uh, the, the update allowed me to um, it, it gave me about, oh, I don't know, what, what was it, 50 sentences that I had to read out. So I literally read out 50 sentences one after another and then uh, it processed it overnight. And then the next day now, if I type something into my iPhone, it will say that in my voice. I've never said it, but but literally now. I can just type anything. And the, the idea was for, you know, the idea is, you know, there are people who medically are losing the ability to speak. Mm. So before they lose the ability to speak, they're able to record their own voice. And then, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But the other side of that, of course, is that somebody now can take my voice and have me say whatever they want. And I have no idea. You know, they, they can record a phone conversation and phone somebody I know and say, look, I can't speak now, but I'm in desperate trouble. And it's my voice. It really mm. is my voice. Like, mm. And that's just with a simple iPhone. You know, that's that's not even high tech thing that you had to go buy. This, it's on my phone, you know, and that's the, so that's the, that's the voice part of it. But then you've got the um, the you know the deep fakes, the the visual ones, and you know I think um, you you go online and it's funny. You're on like I as I said, I'm on I'm on TikTok a lot, and you see celebrities doing hilarious things that they aren't actually doing, but it's absolutely them doing it. You know, it looks and sounds and acts perfectly like they have the mannerisms and everything, but it's it's not them. So that's funny. But then when you when you think that that can be used in, you know, such, um, you know, such a malicious way. And it can yeah. be used, you know, for a celebrity could then uh, be a deep fake could be used to sell a, a product and that product might not be good for the people that they're trying to sell it to. Uh, so so it's not the celebrity doing it. So they haven't mm. done anything wrong, but their name and their reputation is being used to sell something that's totally inappropriate to a group of people. And it's very easy to be swayed by that because you don't know that it's not the celebrity. 
but mm. but but, th- mm. but like think think even on on geopolitical terms. You know, uh, if you have uh, we talked previously about you know people following um, you know certain politicians and you know being fanatical almost about certain politicians and how um, if a, if if these people say something, then they're ready to believe it. So now you can have something put out that is the person that they all believe and trust implicitly saying something that they didn't say at all, you know, and and by the time, you know, by the time then, you know, the person comes forward and says, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say that, you know, you you probably get the other person saying, oh, that's, that's fake news. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a deep fake saying they didn't do it. They really did say, you know, and who, who do you believe? Who do you trust? You know, and, and that's the, the really worrying um landscape we found find yourself in now is is that you literally can't you know you can't trust your i think you know it's getting back to uh like there's there's bill tyson the journalist he's sitting beside me now he really is <laughs> um, he's sitting beside me now and if he tells me something i know it's bill but mm-hmm. apart from that and, and the problem is now since the pandemic i think largely um people have got used to actually not going like we've all got our zoom meetings and we've all got our pe- people meet up in real life a lot less mm. so we are reliant on seeing people on screens you mm. know where, yeah. where that wouldn't yeah. have been the case so much before so um so like the actual real living person beside you 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 can you can trust that that's them Otherwise, you, you can't. You can't. And like, I, I mean, I know Declan's voice very well and I know his intonation and I know his pronunciation. I know the phrases he uses. So if I got a phone call from Declan and was down to be saying, you know, I'm in big trouble. Can I borrow a thousand euro? You know, I know he's as honest as the day is long and I give it to him and I know I get it back. Yeah. But now I would know if it, if it didn't come from his phone, phone, if yeah, it, no, phone yeah. number. But I get emails all the time that are from look like they're from my email address. Yeah. And I don't know how people do yeah. that. But if they can clone and make it look like you're, they're sending something from your email address they can certainly in time make it look like a Declan's phone number or my phone yeah. number or anybody. Or my, my wallet and my phone have been stolen this kind person let me use their phone you know yeah yeah. I recently had um, a very official looking letter letter everything uh, email completely on um, post from our post service saying that I had to pay a tax on um, uh, an item that was being delivered. Mm-hmm. I was expecting an item at that time. So I automatically thought that this was genuine and clicked in and it was asking for this payment and I actually gave some of my details. Um, and then it, on the back of my mind, I was thinking this is too easy, you know, so I did a quick Google before I pressed a send or whatever. I did a quick Google and it was they will never ask for money, um, you know, over email. But I'd already given um, an amount of my information. And um, so I had to completely block that card. I had to phone up the mm-hmm. bank and get the card blocked and get a new card, you know. So it's so easy. And I would consider myself, you know, have to quite be savvy. quite savvy. Yeah, you yeah. Know. there can be very unfortunate situations where the timing of something influences yeah. you. Like, I mean, yeah. I have taught my parents never reply to an email they're, or a text. They're spam. And I've taught them don't click on the link and all this kind of stuff. So my dad gets this text from a toll bridge saying you owe 97 euro. And I had just bizarrely at the same time, I went through the toll bridge in his car and they charged me four times what they were supposed to charge mm. me. So it looked like the, the, what they had charged me was the first penalty and then they were asking for the second penalty from him from a text message and it all it almost looked it looked so real yeah. it looked so real what happened with my car was it was still dark they couldn't tell I was a car because they couldn't read my licence plate and they just overcharged me and I got it back eventually after a little bit of effort but it was the timing of it yeah. was just it's, yeah. unbelievable yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you know I was annoyed with myself but this is you know, this is what happens. You know, it's so easy yeah. now. And then the other side of that, um, uh, uh, I got I got a, a message saying uh, somebody in America is using your credit card. Um, if this is you, say yes. And if it's not you, say no. And I was like, oh, you know, that's another scam. I ignored it. But it was somebody in America using my <laughs> credit card. And uh, so th- so I didn't, you know, so that's the problem is, you know, um, when, do you, you know, that sounded like a scam to me. So I ignored it and then they went and spent a load of money on my credit card in America, you know. Um, so, so you know, it's just impossible to, to navigate that. And I think what you did is definitely um, the way to go is stop 
and then just go online and uh, generally you'll find that somebody else has already been scammed with the same scam and has put it up on on, online, you know. There's actually an interesting one going around at the moment, um, which I read about where somebody will phone you and say, can you hear me properly? And hoping you'll say yes. And then they can use that as a verification to sign you up for different things. So this p- particular person I read had said, um, yes, I can, ha- you know, was clued in, had heard about this and said, yes, I can hear you. And they said, um, are you sure you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And then they put the phone down. Um, so it is something like you, w- you would automatically just answer yes. But then for some for some things to subscribe to certain things, they will say on the phone to answer yes, you know, so. Yeah. Ah. Cool. We need more protection, you know. We're 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 talking about what we, what we should be doing, but what should the government be doing? What should the EU be doing? Yeah. And what should the digital giants be doing? Because AI is just making fraud and the potential to defraud us up to a higher and higher and higher and higher level. And you know, I've been banging on with um in my column about uh, digital giants and, and Google and Facebook and the whole um you, you know we have certain rules and laws that are quite strict like gdpr and then we're missing out on a whole raft of other things like a fundamental thing for me is that they are, they focus on taking things down rather than putting them up in the first place like a a traditional newspaper could never put up say for example leo varadkar advertising that he used a cryptocurrency which was a scam and sign up for it here and then you get scammed so he's not he's you know you're 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 f- using his image illegally you're saying he's connected to cryptocurrency when he isn't and then you're roping people into a scam mm. and that was put up on um very respectable sites i i actually rang the scammers um and when i challenge uh the digital giants about these things and this is going back years i mean i've been doing this with google for years and when i rang them first a few years ago it was oh we take down their response is we take down 2.7 billion bad ads every year and i'm going well what damage did they do while they were, <laughs> while they were still up and then the following year back to them again and and they're i mean and they, and they know that this is all they have to do mm-hmm. so they are legally in the right because they're not a publisher Whereas a newspaper could never put up a picture of Leo Varadkar advertising cryptocurrency. They can put it up and they can yeah. put it, they can place it on very respectable sites. Mm-hmm. The next year it was three billion, over three billion. And the next year it was three point something billion. It's mm-hmm. going up all the time. So they're taking down more and they're claiming credit for taking them down. But they shouldn't be allowed to put them up in the first place. And yeah. and as we mm-hmm. get more sophisticated, instead of having a picture of Leo Varadkar, you have actual Leo Varadkar. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Which would be more convincing and more yeah. dangerous. And when you think about it, if I get back to what I was saying about recording my voice, like all of these people's voices and images are there for them. They've no problem. You know, uh, with the, the way the deep fakes work visually is they get different angles of the person's head. So in, in, in my case, I had to read 50 sentences and it learned all the different nuances of my voice and then it was able to do that but so visually what they do is they take a front on a side profile so they just have lo- they need lots of images to show their face in every possible ma- and then they can replicate that but with celebrities um, and politicians they've no end of, yeah. of material to do that so they've yeah. absolutely no problem doing in it. the lesson we did learn like looking at the eyes is often a giveaway um, and also it's getting to know as well as it mentions um you know, getting to know the character of mm-hmm. these people yeah. and so that you have some kind of, yeah. you know, you say, well, you know, you can question that doesn't sound like something mm-hmm. this person would say. You know? And I, I think I think that's a that's a really important um, possibility for 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 how to combat this on, a, on an individual basis um, is is to is to get back to what Bill was saying in an earlier discussion we had, um, you know, about an academic that he follows who is an expert in this area. Um, but by by bringing your sources down to these reliable people and getting to know, p- putting the effort into getting to know these people, um, I, I know that, you know, my brother would never do that or he would never say that or, you know, I know them. I, I, I know his character. Uh, I know my sister. I know, you know, there are people that I've gotten to know. I have certain friends, like you said earlier on, I would never, uh, you know, I, I'd I'd be reliable for the thousand quid I borrowed or whatever. <laughs> we get to know Speaking people. Speaking of what you owe me. <laughs>
But we get to know people, you know, and I think I think that we need to put the time into selecting people who are giving us the information we need, who are experts on that information and then getting to know those people so that if that person says something that's totally out of character, it rings alarm bells. You know, mm. and I think that's what does the blue tick mean anything? Mm. It used to, though. Yeah. It used to be a way of the average social media user being able to tell if somebody was the real person. So the, every celebrity, there's just so many fake accounts based on that celebrity's yeah. image and likeness. And on, on Instagram, if they're on Instagram, you can report it, say they're imitating um, that celebrity's yeah account. But if that celebrity is not on Instagram, you can't say this person is imitating the celebrity. So it looks like they're they are the celebrity because the, the real celebrity doesn't have an account with more followers. So it is. But so on 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 Twitter, the blue tick was very useful for saying this is a, a credible uh, person or organization or it is the real celebrity, because there have been situations where people are getting social media users are getting direct messages who they think is from their favourite celebrity. And wouldn't you get really excited if your favourite pop star or movie star was text, texting you, you know? Mm. Uh, but it's not the real person. And now without the blue tick, it's much harder for people to yeah. ascertain what, yeah. to, what is it. Mean, anybody can get a blue tick. Well, oh, but they pay for it. No, they shouldn't the have thing. to pay for it. Because yeah. that takes the... Um, you know, it, it takes some of the credibility out of it. Well, th- this is the problem. They shouldn't have to pay for it. They should get it if they're credible. Well, th- this is the well, way it was. You can prove that yeah. they are who yes. they say they are, yeah. But this is the way it was, is that if, if blue ticks were given out to people who, uh, like TikTok, for example. Uh, TikTok gives a tick to certain people because they've been checked, they've been verified, they've been whatever. And you can't buy one. You know, you can't just mm-hmm. apply for one or buy one. Um, and you can, you know, you can have hundreds of thousands of followers and not get one. You know, they they, they, de- they decide. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. But at least when you see the blue tick, you you know, it means something. Where um, And it would have been the same in the past where, you know, you had these verified accounts. And then, you know, greed came in. They're like, oh, we can monetize. So now you have people who literally, you know, buy the blue tick you know and that's it so it's mm-hmm. lost its meaning completely it used to be a verified thing mm-hmm. it's no longer a verified thing it's now somebody paid for it they're yeah. trialing uh, paying uh, a small sum uh, a euro per year in order to be able to comment or to like um, on twitter and you know there's a this there's a it's there's pro to there's, they say it's to eliminate bots and it's a debatable Thing. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, everybody hates the idea of monetizing, mm-hmm. but if it's a, uh, and obviously there is an ulterior motive yeah. <laughs> with her in making more money. Yeah. But what are they going to do to get rid of the bots? That I mean, that but is as soon as that that's invented, there will be technology invented which will overcome it. Yeah. And that'll make the charging of us well, as that, real people who want to yeah. use Twitter. <laughs> pointless but that's I mean that's ev- that's that's evolution you know evolution there's always going to be a solution and then there'll be a problem then yeah. with that solution mm-hmm. and they, so I mean that's you know yeah. but, but like you know I and think it, one of the great difficulties is everything is evolving so quickly so yeah. quickly and you can't um, mitigate against yeah. everything you know it's just um, happening so quick so it's firefighting all the time and mm. trying to come up um, yeah. with with a plan, but and anyway, there, there are there are some positive aspects to yeah. AI. I mean, we're talking about the negative ones. Yeah, in this yeah. Session, but I mean, it, there, there are great applications in terms of productivity. If you make videos or films, you know, AI. It, the, in the old days, you had a hard drive and you had to scroll to your hard drive, going, "I know I got a picture of a sunset <laughs> somewhere." Yeah. You know, yeah. you'd be days trying to yeah. find it and you can't find it. And now, literally, your your AI can go through all of your footage and immediately pick out that that shot that you wanted. So there's pl- plenty of Lots applications. Of but I mean, a, a lovely uh, application from Ireland is there is a journalist called Charlie Bird and he has motor neuron disease now mm-hmm. and he can't speak anymore. So he has an AI uh, assistant who speaks for him with his voice. So he types in the text. And as a journalist, uh, he was a broadcast journalist, not a print journalist. So his voice was his way of communicating the news, communicating what was happening in the world. It was his way of b- being meaningful in the world. Mm-hmm. And he, now he has his voice back, oh, which is a tremendous amazing. use of AI. Mm-hmm. Well, on that very positive note, (laughs) thank you so much for today's discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Maura. Thank Thank you. you.